Hi, it's November 15th, and this is the ancestor uh, King Penda's day of death. I am descended from him um, because his sister is one of my ancestors. Her name is Oswith, and she married King Necton of Albia, who was of the Dalriata clan, and Dalriata ruled Kent County Antrim of Ireland and also the western side of Scotland and later they were the ones to overtake the Picts after a very very long struggle and become the rulers of Scotland. Uh, king Penda is honored because he was the last king who was heathen that was of great power in um, England and he was the king of Mercia and he died in battle on this day. Um, he was not in a holy battle, and that is something I find kind of funny that the, the heathens will celebrate today, um, because most heathens are very religiously intolerant, at least the most outspoken ones, especially against Christianity. And um, at this time period, when a king would become Christian, these people were illiterate. They were warlords. They didn't know anything about what they were doing. But if you wanted to trade with Europe, you had to become Christian a lot of the time because that's just how it, it worked. The church and state were like this. And so what you would do is you would, you know, you'd sign, yeah, spill some water on me, whatever, right? You know, they didn't know what was really happening. And, you know, and they aren't, they weren't religious men, you know, these were not priests, these were not prophetesses, these were just guys trying to keep a kingdom fed and safe and if possible to expand it. And there were a lot of different warlords happening at the same time. And you wanted to have alliances and you wanted to also um, not starve to death, so. Penda was brilliant in that he did not have any religious intolerance. He was heathen, but he allowed his subjects to become Christian and had no problem with that. He also did what was rather unthinkable. Uh, he had alliances with Welsh um, kings and some of whom are my ancestors too. And the fact that he could do that was pre is pretty amazing because these are the indigenous people of the British Isles and they're working with the inv an invader um, to fight off a common enemy. And there was uh, Celtic Christianity and then there was Roman Christianity and things were pretty messed up with all of that because Rome was like, what are you guys doing in the Celtic Church? You've got the wrong calendar. You're ce celebrating Easter, like completely on the wrong day. I mean, it was just a disaster. And so with all of this going on and kings being tricked with like, hey, if you win this battle, it was Jesus who did it. We worship him. And kings being polytheists, sharing like, sure, right? I mean, a lot of people forget that even the Vikings would often wear a cross and a Thor's hammer because as a polytheist, you want all the help you can get. And that's one of the beauties of being polytheist is that we have pluralism and so we can worship as many gods as we feel called to worship and anyone who helps us, it's great. And so it's ironic that heathens will honor Pender today as the last great heathen king, but there's nothing about him that supports religious intolerance or um, xenophobia or other things that you can find quite a lot in um, basic heathen uh, community that is so dependent on the lore. So, uh, anyway, so it makes me a de uh, descendant of Woden as well, with Pendra being a descendant um, ten generations from Woden. Although I choose not to honor Woden because Freya has made it very clear that the days when humans needed to be constantly battling nature um, to survive are over, and so we have to change our ways. So, anyway, um, I honor Penda.